hi everyone and welcome back so in this video uh, we are going to talk about chat gpt and how you can use chat gpt to make your task easier it can be a blog writing it can be just getting help on the code because now it, it these are the old days where you need to struggle on stack overflow to get the some code snippet or looking at the github to see some code samples let's say simple example i just wanted to do a simple websocket api is using node.js nest.js right so i wrote this example i will try to show you what it is doing and it is giving me the the clear and the concise response that is what i'm actually looking for so i don't need to actually look here and there so it's like setting up the simple nest.js application and then simple nest.js uh, gateway right and here is our controllers providers and finally it is just like a bootstrapping the application and starting the application so simple websocket implementation now let's say if i just wanted to create auth apis in express using jwt token and bcrypt what it will do is it will tell me okay how to create express app how to install all the dependencies this is how these are some random of random users and it will also create a middleware so this is the register api which is creating the user in just an array it's not using the mongodb you can see it is just doing a user dot find otherwise user dot push right simple data simple in memory database it is using and then there is a protected api and then there is a middleware it has written for me authenticate token if there is authorization split it and check validate using using jwt dot verify so if you are doing it for the first time you will see you will get lots of help on this so now i will just uh, do the same i can copy the question and then we will try to do something else using mongoose right instead of in memory i will try to using a mongoose let's see if it is able to generate another sample for me so what we need is a we need a mongodb connection so it has connected to the mongodb creating a user model and then this is a simple registry api doing a find one user already exists otherwise it is creating the user here then simple login api doing a find one and then it is just doing a bcrypt compare because we are storing the password uh, using the bcrypt.hash and simply protected api and it is using this middleware authenticate token which is defined here authenticate token is extracting your uh, jwt token and verifying it if it is valid then it is it is putting the decoded value in the request.user object otherwise we are done here i'm using it to write some blogs also okay i want to write uh, write blog on uh, different message providers like sns sqs rabbit mq i want to just know more about it or want to read about it so uh, the comparison of message providers or a message brokers these are not really uh, brokers right rabbit mq we can say so you can see it's first talked about sns okay these are the details it is a topic based publish subscribe mechanism and then sqs it is like uh, sqs is fully managed messaging queue service it decouples the component in the distributed environment where you can send a message to the particular queue rabbit mq is a robust widely adopted open source broker implementation it also has this it uses the emqp protocols and all and then there is some comparison i want to write a simple blog on building crud using nest js postgres right postgres is the database so it needs to use some type orm so i don't think it will okay it is writing code for me so it is created the application and then what it is doing is it is installing the type orm dependency and we have created a database simple and we have created simple items and now i will start adding the type orm entity and then type orm repository right and then i will just initialize my simple postgres connection what happened uh, this is the partial i mean this is the part two okay so it is running the same we need to install nsgs type orm and this is the type orm module dot for root that will give us the database module with the database connections and then we can write our services and controllers this is the module controller and services this is the to do service injecting the repository and doing the find find one save operations 
then tuning generating so we, we really like the response so i can just do update delete this is like a simple crud operation now we are writing a nest js controller find one find create update delete so it's like a create update delete operations and we have finally starting the nest js application so it's like a mind blowing i can write even blog because i saw there are a lot of people has put a blog how to build a simple crud operations using nest js postgres and that is done simply now how to manage environments in nest js application i mean it will auto auto correct it you can manage the environment using dot env module so we just create a dot env dot development and then we can just do a dot env config right here this is we can use a dot env module and we can load the config before starting the application so it will put all the values in the dot env and i want to play a little bit on okay nest yes is fine uh how to secure nest yes application code examples so this is all about security how first we need to use input validations and we use class validator and we need to use a validation pipe another is we can just use these jwt strategies to validate the authorization header and uh, rate limiting we can use this rate limit middleware app.use this window in milliseconds there are only 100 uh, requests can be uh, uh, allowed in the 15 seconds and similarly server configurations http headers we can use helmet to secure our apis or we can secure the communication i mean you can enable the https so it will be enabled only on the https and couple of more i mean the helmet module is providing all security now i, I want to read more about content security policy what is csp and use with nest js so what is a content security policy this is like uh, to secure your apis or secure your content being delivered from the uh, cdns so here what we can do is we can use this uh, helmet module only that provides these the content security policies let's see if you are rendering the content from the server side use and then we can just use these csp directives to secure our apis okay like who will be the host who can uh, Pro, which particular domain can render the styles and source all these csv policies has been applied okay uh, how to validate payload using jord sometimes whenever i have a time i try to play with this uh, simple examples you can see jord create user schema i mean you can also use joy for that and now how we can use a jord with our controller so this is the nest js app validate payload create user schema dot parse because this is returning this is returning the object there you can apply parse method so if it is error then it will just return uh, well, the return a particular status code you can put a try catch and then you can just send a bad request okay uh, how to add how to do payload validation using joy and class validator right you can you can use joy class validator or jord in your nest js apis or express apis to do the payload validation it is using joy right that username email passwords and then here you can validate the object so the only thing is class validator you, you can use class validators with the dtos but if you are using joy and jord you need to write those inside a controller methods here it is using validate async uh, and then if everything is fine it will proceed otherwise you can just throw the validation errors okay write me a blog on express.js best practices while writing the apis i want to know what all the the best practices are so you need to structure your components properly you can adopt the mvcs you can do a proper error handling of different status code properly validate input properly uh, manage your environment variables for the dev production security considerations always use return block the http headers like x uh, x processed by or http headers use content security policies 
cross site scripting mime sniffing disable the headers using helmet implement logging implement caching and do the proper testing using unit testings and performance testing and i want to know is what is pm2 and how to use with express app because i want to know P pm2 is popular load balancer tool using which you can create a multiple instance of same application so you can see pm2 start it will create a single instance and then you can just use pm2 monitor to monitor the how many memory that particular instance is using and you can also use pm2 at your ec2 instance if you are not using container based or lambda solution how to build performance monitoring solution solution in node.js so let's say i want to do the performance monitoring right so there are couple of node modules key matrix is there uh, configure the monitor tool fine tuning configurations load balancing okay i am talking about how to build one build a simple node.js api monitoring tool So will it give me okay it is building some code it is creating some middleware i want code examples let's try to play with this let's say if it is able to improve the code simple example express okay I mean this is just like a basic middleware once the request comes and once the request responded you can just use on request dot on whenever the finishes you can actually track the time okay this is the request arrival and this is the request once you respond on the request and this you can use this uh, as a API because this is a global middleware you are adding for all the requests this will be applied okay how to build a custom rate limit middleware so this is generic let's say i want to do it in the node.js so we can pre prevent the ddos attacks so here i think it's going to use the same rate, rate limit and it is some set of uh, now it is a custom middleware right rate limit middle middleware uh, get the client ip address and we can just create some kind of a store and we can check in a particular duration how many requests are coming from that particular client if that is exceeding that count is exceeding the and then the max limit then the rate limit exceeded please try again later because let's say you are using one api let's say if you are using 10 different apis and sending the request then the rate limit middleware won't work but if you are using one single uh, ip you are sending the ddos attacks then rate limit middleware will come into picture and this is how we are registering the middleware so i am using these days i'm using this uh, to use lots of things like to write a blog to write uh, custom tutorials to understand i mean it's hardly if you want to help if you, you can take help from chat gpt for even coding solutions so let's say if i stuck with some particular problem i can take a code snippet but it's not that smart okay uh, it can give you the complex solutions and complex answers it is just giving you some snippet examples that most of the time helps so let's say if i want to build build a auth middleware for nest js and auth zero so i'm i want to build a middleware uh, using nest js and auth zero auth zero is the client i auth zero is auth auth protocol we are using with auth zero we are doing login and here i'm going to use this issue algorithm right i can create a simple auth strategy that will validate against this auth zero and it will just check okay user is valid then we should allow user to access our protected apis so this is how i created a simple auth middleware and passport dot authenticate if this is fine otherwise send unauthorized and then you can just include this auth strategy and you created a middleware so register a middleware here for all the routes i wanted to execute auth middleware 
okay continue keep generating because i really like it you can create an app guard so and these are the guards you have added so whenever this request is triggered this will use auth guard that will use auth strategy to protect our apis that's it now let's uh, play simple uh, play some call custom and some complex okay let's say in the real time i want to how to download sql data as csv from x nest js apis or express apis this is the real world problem which you try to read right so convert csv into sql that i don't want okay it is going to so there is a mysql database i want to download it so i'm getting all the users from the database and this is my data.csv this is the header because this is going to use i think fast csv yes csv writer it is some module here i define the headers i set the content type and i'm just sending this csv file so i got the sql data from the user table this is what it is reading and I defined the headers and the path. This is what, and I got the the data. It is writing. It got the it it, it has written the data in the using CSV writer instance, and then I'm sending this file. Simple, right? So there are multiple solutions of doing this. Also, I can use a fast CSV. Okay, or uh, I can just let's say I want to learn something about storybook. What is storybook react okay so i heard that storybook is really good so what is the the need of storybook what are all the key features component isolation it creates some kind of a library which you can use for your application so you create your reusable components put it inside repository and you can use it how to work with npm workspace with nx mono repo it will talk about the N npm workspace like this is how we can install the nx globally right and here i created this workspace inside the packages whatever you are putting that will be part of the the workspace i'm creating the packages installing the dev dependencies and this is how i can link my dependencies i'm talking about this is uh, npm workspace in pnpm workspace it is different like nx mono repo with pnpm workspace so working with nx uh, mono repo using pnpm workspace is really nice and this is how we do it we create this and we create a pnpm this is the package json and you can also create a pnpm workspace yml i don't think it is going to give me all the examples Hey, um, what satisfactory? Let's say I wanted to explore how to write GitHub action for Node.js app. That that can be useful, right? I'm doing it for the let's say if I'm doing it for first time, I need to create a GitHub workflow, and then I can just create a Node.js YML file that contains something like this: on push on the branch main, or when you are doing a submitting a pull request on the main. I can specify my jobs like build up, build and test. These are the steps, install dependencies, run test, generate code coverage, and you can also add a deployment. So, okay. Now I want to write some custom. Okay. Uh, write GitHub actions to push code to AWS Lambda. Let's see what it tells me. So AWS Lambda we have right, we need to archive it, we need to have access key ID and secret key ID that should be configured on your GitHub, GitHub settings and then this is how you are doing it, you are configuring this, you are putting all the AWS environment in the environments, I mean you need to populate that for the pipeline and then deploy the Lambda, you can just, if you are using serverless that that's a two line stuff, npm install minus c serverless and sls deploy if you are using aws cdk then it is aws cdk deploy npx aws cdk deploy cdk deploy how to deploy nestjs lambda to a nestjs lambda to aws lambda using aws cdk something complex let's see what it answers because i'm going to like it so we install aws cdk 
CDK project we configured inside uh, we put this configuration and here we are initializing the lambda this is the path of your handler let's say we it's like a simple index.js file okay then we are just creating AWS CDK stack okay that's not pretty much okay I mean it, I was expecting some more but obviously I'm not, that's not a human this is the node.js function and here this stack will be able to deploy the lambda okay so I will try to customize it deploy nest.js rest apis as lambda to aws using cdk i'm just trying to make it complex and more complex now it needs to think otherwise it will just generate the same outcome which it has generated because now i'm talking about simple nest js uh, services which contains the rest api not just a simple lambda function okay it has just said okay yeah that's good still good what it is saying is okay uh, it is getting it from the assets maybe because nest gsa application you need to build and generate the build artifacts that it will read that contains your root handler file the main handler file and then you are just generating api gateway exposing these methods okay and creating the resource and you will just configure the url and just creating the stack okay i love to generate more data and then aws CDK will package and deploy your Nest.js APIs as a AWS Lambda function. That I somewhat like it because what it is doing is you can write a custom script. So you have a Nest.js REST APIs. You write a script to bundle and create this folder. After this, it's all about running a NPX CDK deploy because it knows NPX CDK deploy and you need to also pass the stack name. So do we have a stack name here like Nest.js API? This is a CDK stack. So my API stack. So you can deploy that stack and then it will just know where to pick the code from AWS environment configurations you already have. So it will deploy that. So we are installing the AWS CDK, initializing the TypeScript application, installing the dependencies. It's somewhat better, right? Now I can play with uh, how to build GitLab CI to push code to S3 for React app. So what I'm doing is I'm just writing GitLab CI YML which should be able to help me to push my React build to S3. So it should be able to synchronize. Simple, right? That's what I'm expecting. In deploy, it will just configure the AWS access key and secret key and it will synchronize to that S3 bucket for that we already have the access key and secret key so we already have access to synchronize the build artifacts so here we are doing a build if you see the build it is just doing npm ci and then it is just synchronizing your build output you can see build output to the s3 bucket something more complex uh, build chat application using express So it should be using WebSocket. So I want to learn more about WebSocket, right? It is creating a server.js. It has created simple uh, server with index.html and I'm creating a simple input text field, right? Index.html and this is a socket I am using. So whenever you are connected, you will be you will be emitting the message. And when you are disconnecting, client disconnected. And this is the the index.html content. We are using socket IO client side script and then we are just adding these when you submit the button i should be able to send this value to the message element socket.on socket.emit we we have access to the socket at the because this is the index.html we are rendering from the server so socket.emit socket. Uh, the this event listener will handle it whenever you are emitting it it will handle using dot on and when you are sending socket.on message it is broadcasting the message to all the other uh, connected clients okay how to secure chat how to integrate pusher with express apis i mean that is all about chat pusher is the external client 
so here this is the pusher which gives you a api id secret and cluster so you create the pusher instance and then use this pusher instance uh, with your uh, simple node.js apis so whenever you say okay there is a message so pusher will trigger so it is actually uh, extracting your this uh, real-time chat functionality to the pusher and then same pusher client you will configure at the client side and you will subscribe to the particular chat room and then you will receive the messages it is like really simple chat implementation you can do with the pusher i have done it so build instead of building a real-time chat you can use a pusher third party it will create these rooms channel and messages okay that's all about playing with uh, playing with uh, chat gpt i really like it and now i'm using it for every different purpose i mean getting the simple examples are very easy instead of exploring the simple code snippet here and there even you can use it to write a blog because blog contains the proper structure you can keep asking the questions what content you should put uh du code duplication or the content duplication may be there so you should be running the checks that you are not duplicating the someone's blog content which this chat gpt is extracting from that's all about this i mean you can play with this i i think most of the people already aware how it works but there's just a demo that how you can use chat gpt to make the smart decisions and take the code snippets write a blogs do everything i mean even the small kids will start using it as soon as they will be aware okay uh, that's all guys uh, thanks everyone